Some critics will say it is nothing great that the Quran speaks about astronomy because the Arabs were advanced in the field of astronomy. I do agree, the Arabs were advanced in the field of astronomy, but I like to remind them that it was centuries after the Quran was revealed that the Arabs became advanced in the field of astronomy. So it is from the Quran that the Arabs learned about astronomy and not the vice versa. In the subject of hydrology, when you ask the atheist, that you ask him about the water cycle, he will tell you that the water evaporates from the ocean. It forms into clouds. The clouds move into the interior. It falls down as rain, and the water is replenished. We ask him, when did you come to know this? He will tell you it was in 1580, when Sir Bernard Palissy, he spoke about the water cycle for the first time. 1580. So you tell him, what you came to know in 1580, just hardly a couple of hundred years before, the Quran mentions 1400 years ago. The Quran says the water evaporates from the ocean, formed into the clouds. The clouds move and join. They move into the interior and they fall down as rain and the water is replenished. The water cycle is spoken in the Quran in great detail in several places. Mentioned in Surah Zumur, chapter 39, verse number 21. In Surah Rum, chapter number 30, verse number 24. In Surah Hijar, chapter number 15, verse number 22. In Surah Mu'minun, chapter number 23, verse number 18. In Surah Rum, chapter number 30, verse number 48. In Surah Nur, chapter number 24, verse number 43. It's mentioned in Surah Naba, chapter number 78, verse number 12 to 14. It's mentioned in Surah Araf, chapter number 7, verse 57. In Surah Ra, chapter number 13, verse number 17. It's mentioned in Surah Furqan, chapter number 25, verse number 40 and 49. It's mentioned in Surah Yasin, chapter number 36, verse number 34. It's mentioned in Surah Fatir, chapter number 35, verse number 9. It's mentioned in Surah Jasha, chapter number 45, verse number 5. In Surah Qaf, chapter number 50, verse number 9 and 10. It's mentioned in Surah Waqiyah, chapter number 56, verse number 67 to 70. It's mentioned in Surah Tariq, chapter number 86, verse number 11. I can go on and go on and go on, quoting only the verses in the Quran which speak about the water cycle only. The Quran speaks about the water cycle in great detail. Who could have mentioned this in the Quran 14 years ago? No reply. Don't worry, continue. The Quran speaks about geology. The geologists say that the radius of the earth is 3,750 miles. The deeper layers are hot and fluid. The upper layer is a thin crust, hardly 1 to 20 miles in thickness. And there are high possibilities it will shake. It is due to the folding phenomena which gives rise to mountain ranges, which prevents the earth from shaking. Allah mentioned this in the Quran. It's mentioned in the Quran. In Surah Naba, chapter number 78, verse number 7, as well as 8, Allah says, Wal Jibal Autada, we have made the earth as an expanse and the mountains as pegs, which science has agreed today. A similar message is mentioned in Surah Ambiya, chapter 21, verse number 31, that we have placed on the earth mountain standing firm, lest it would shake with you. In the field of oceanology, previously we knew that there were two types of water, salt and sweet, but the Quran says in Surah Furqan, chapter 25, verse number 53, that it is he who has let free two bodies of flowing water, one sweet and palatable, the other salty and bitter. Though they meet, they do not mix. There is a barrier which is forbidden to be trespassed. We knew that there were two types of water, but what does the Quran mean there is a barrier which is forbidden to be trespassed? 
Today we know that whenever one type of water flows into the other type of water, it loses its constituents and gets homogenized into the water it flows. This homogenizing area is called as a barrier, a barzakh in the Quran. Quran mentioned this 14 years ago. Quran mentioned about biology. It's mentioned in Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 30. We have created every living thing from water. Will you not then believe? Who could have believed in the deserts of Arabia that everything is made from water? Today science tells us that every living thing is made from water. There is a theory known as theory of probability. That if you make a wild guess, the chances you'll be right is depending upon what are the options. For example, if I toss a coin, head or tails, whatever reply you give, the chances you'll be right is one upon two, ha, 50%. Two options, chances you'll be right is one upon two, 50%. If I toss a coin twice, the chances I'll be right both the times is one upon two into one upon two, it is one upon four, it is 25%. If I toss a coin thrice, the chances I'll be right all three times is 1 upon 2 into 1 upon 2 into 1 upon 2, it is 1 upon 8, 12 and a half percent. If I throw a dice, the dice has got six sides. The chances if I make a wild guess it will be right is 1 upon 6. Now if you apply this theory of probability that someone made a wild guess, for example, what is the shape of the earth? You can think of 10 things. Flat, square, rectangle, triangular, hexagonal, on and on, maybe spherical. The chances if you make a wild guess it is spherical, it will be right is 1 upon 10. If you ask a person, the light of the moon, is it its own light or reflected light? If he makes a wild guess, chances will be right is 1 upon 2. The chances that both are right, the shape of the earth and the light of the moon, is not its own light, is 1 upon 10 into 1 upon 2 is 1 upon 20. That is 5 percent. All living creatures made of what? You can think of a thousand things. Sand, iron, tin, wood, on and on, maybe even water. Chances, you make a wild guess and one is right, is 1 upon 1000. Chances, all three are correct. Shape of the earth is spherical. Light of the moon is reflected. Everything made from water is 1 upon 10 into 1 upon 2 into 1 upon 1,000. Is 1 upon 20,000. Is 0.005%. Only in three scientific facts, it's 0.005%. I've already mentioned several. And if you read my book, there are hundreds. There are many things. Quran speaks about botany in Surah Rahad, chapter number 13, verse number 3, that all the fruits are created in pairs, in sexes, male and female. Quran says in Surah Taha, chapter number 20, verse 53, that the plants are made in sexes, male and female, which you came to know recently. In the field of zoology, Quran says the animals and the birds live in community like the human beings. In Surah Anam, chapter number 6, verse number 38, which we came to know recently. Quran speaks about the bee, that it can find its path, which we came to know recently. In Surah Nahal, chapter number 16, Verse number 60 and 69. The Quran says that the worker bee is the female bee. Previously thought it was the male bee. Quran says in Surah Nail, chapter number 16, verse number 69, that the worker bee is the female bee. Quran speaks about the lifestyle of the spider in Surah Ankabut, chapter 29, verse number 41. The Quran speaks about the lifestyle of the ant in Surah Namal, chapter number 27, verse number 17 and 18, which we have come to recently. Quran speaks about genetics that it is the male fluid, it is the sperm which is responsible for the sex of the child. In Surah Najam, chapter number 53, verse number 45 and 46, as well as chapter number 75, verse number 37 to 39, which we came to know recently. Quran speaks about embryology, that all the human beings are made from alaka, a leech-like substance, something which clings. In Surah Alaq, Surah Ikra, chapter 96, verse number 2, which we came to know recently. Quran speaks about the various embryological stages, alaka, mudga, Izama, Lahem, in Surah Mu'minun, chapter number 23, verse number 12 to 14, which we have come to recently. There are various scientific facts mentioned in the Quran. I'll just mention two more. There are people 
who say that after we human beings die and after we are buried and our bones are disintegrated, how will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be able to reconstruct the bone on the day of judgment? So Allah says, it's mentioned in the Quran, chapter number 75, verse number 3 and 4, that when they say that how will Allah be able to reconstruct the bones on the day of judgment, tell them, Allah can not only reconstruct the bones, He can even reconstruct in perfect order the very tips of your finger. What does Allah mean by saying He can not only reconstruct your bones, He can even reconstruct in perfect order the very tips of your finger. It was in 1880 that Sir Francis Gold, he discovered the fingerprinting method and said that no two fingerprints, even in a million human beings, are identical. Today the police, the CID, the FBI, the CIA, they use the fingerprinting method to identify the criminal. Quran speaks about the fingerprinting method 1400 years ago and we discovered in 1880. Who could have mentioned this? Every claim requires evidence to prove its legitimacy. From the heavens to the earth. Is Islam revealed by the Almighty? From the Almighty to us. Is the Quran a divine book? From the beginning to the end. Get the answers and dispel your doubts. With me, Abdurrahim Green. Verify the validity of Islam in the truth that Islam is the truth. Tomorrow at 3.30 p.m. Saudi Arabia and 6 p.m. India on Peace TV. Dialogue. Discussion, discussion, discussion debate, 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 rebuttal, rebuttal, rebuttal conclusion. conclusion. Eliminate misconceptions about religion. Get enlightened. Witness Dr. Zakir Naik in a battle of words in Crossfire every Friday at 8.30 p.m. Saudi Arabia and 9.30 p.m. UAE on Peace TV. Peace TV presents... Over 100 million viewers at one of the largest peace conferences in the world, addressing a sea of spellbound spectators. Over 30 world-renowned orators on Islam with credentials impeccable. The truth of Islam. Deen is your way of life. It is our duty, our obligation. By following the Quran and Sunnah, we will give the message to one and all. To one and all. With articulation exquisite. Read the book of Allah. Islam is the easy way. It's the simple way. Remind each other. The Muslim is not a source of harm for other people. Collaborate with the people for good. This is the call of Islam. With the mission of spreading the truth of Islam. Do what you can to spread the word of Islam. Wherever we are, live like Muslims. Use your power. Allah is saying, why do you need anything else? This Quran is self-sufficient. The only book on the face of the globe, the Quran. How a human being should lead his life is given in this instruction manual, the glorious Quran. The glorious Quran. For peace to prevail on earth in Peacemakers, next on Peace TV. I would like to mention one more thing before I end the scientific facts. Is that there was a scientist by the name of Professor Takrata Ghashan. Professor Takrata Ghashan hails from Thailand. And he was doing a great deal of research in the pain receptors. Previously, we human beings, we thought, and the doctors thought, that only the brain was responsible for the feeling of pain. Today, we come to know that there are certain receptors in the skin which are also responsible for the feeling of pain. That's the reason when a person of burn injury comes to a doctor, the doctor takes a pin and pricks it in the area of burn. If the patient feels pain, the doctor is happy. The pain receptors are intact. If the patient does not feel pain, the doctor is sad. The pain receptors have been destroyed. It's mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse 56. 
that as to those who reject our signs, we shall cast them in the hellfire. And as often as the skins are roasted, we shall give them fresh skin so that they feel the pain. Indicating there is something in the skin which is responsible for the feeling of pain. Imagine, Quran speaks about the pain receptors 1400 years ago. And Prophet Taqrat Akashan, when he came to know this is mentioned in the Quran, in the ninth medical conference in Riyadh, in the conference itself, he said the Shahada and said, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. There's no God but Allah, and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon the Messenger of Allah. So when you ask the atheist, who could have mentioned this in the Quran? The only reply I can give you is the same which he gave you earlier. It is the creator, it is the maker, it is the producer, it is the manufacturer, it is the inventor. This creator, this producer, this manufacturer, this maker, this inventor, we Muslims call him as Allah. That's the reason today science is not eliminating God. It is eliminating models of God. La ilaha illallah. Scientists today, they're eliminating models of God. This cannot be God. This cannot be God. They aren't eliminating God. And a famous philosopher and scientist, Francis Bacon, he said that those who have little knowledge of science, they become atheists. But those who have in-depth knowledge of science, they become a believer in God. I would like to end my talk with the quotation of the Quran from Surah Fusilat, chapter 41, verse number 53, which says, Sanurihim ayatina fil afakhi, wa fi anfusihim, hatta yatabayyira lom anna ulaq, awalam yakfi bi rabbika, anna wa laqulla shayin shaheed, that soon we shall show them our signs into the furthest regions of the horizons and into the soul until it is clear to them that this is the truth. Wa akhru dawana, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Jazakallah for your patience listening. Now we have the presumably more interesting session, the question and answer session. As you prepare your questions for Dr. Zakir, and line up at the three mics we have provided for you in the ground. May I mention a short message of Dr. Zakir on occasion of this conference in context of Peace TV. He tells, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam and humanity, Assalamu alaikum, may peace be on you. I welcome you to share in Peace TV's global mission and vision of creating a better awareness and understanding of Islam as a just, righteous and peaceful way of life for the entire humanity. Share in removing misconceptions, false fear and hate of Islam and Muslims globally. This also is the focus of this conference. Now as Peace TV is telecast to over 150 countries worldwide, it beckons your taqwa, spirit and support to make it a household TV channel across the globe in all continents where it is being broadcast presently, except for South America. Not only in the Muslim homes, but also in millions of non-Muslim homes seeking reliable Islamic knowledge and wisdom, which many a time is not available in the mainstream media. Now we start the question and answer session. If you have your questions, kindly put it forward now to Dr. Zakir, remember three points on the topic, brief and only one at a time. We'll allow the first question for the ladies, the second year, the third at the rear. Yes, sister. Okay, I have one question. In the Surah Al Imran, verse 50, it says to follow the teachings of Jesus. Why doesn't anyone do this? Can you mention your name, sister, please? Chastity. Sister asked a question that the Quran says in Surah Imran, chapter 3, verse number 50, that we have to follow the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. And there are many verses which say that we have to believe in Jesus, peace be upon him. Sister, let me clarify that Islam is the only non-Christian faith which makes it an article of faith to believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. No Muslim is a Muslim if he does not believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. We believe that he was one of the mightiest messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We believe that he was the Messiah, translated Christ. 
We believe that he was born miraculously without any male intervention, which many modern Christians today do not believe. We believe that he gave life to the dead with God's permission. We believe that he healed those born blind and lepers with God's permission. The Christian and the Muslim sister, we are going together. But one may ask, where is the parting of ways? The parting of ways is, sister, that many Christians, they say that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he claimed divinity. He said that he was almighty God. If you read the Bible, sister, there is not a single unequivocal statement. In the complete Bible, where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that I am God, or where he says worship me. If any Christian can point out a single unequivocal statement, a single unambiguous statement, in the complete Bible, where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that I am God, or where he says worship me, I am ready to accept Christianity today. I am not speaking on behalf of my other Muslim brothers. In fact, if you read the Bible, it's mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 28. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, My father is greater than I. Gospel of John, chapter number 10, verse number 29, My father is greater than all. Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 12, verse number 28, I cast out devil with the Spirit of God. Gospel of Luke, chapter number 11, verse number 20, I cast out devil with the finger of God. Gospel of John, chapter number 5, verse number 30, I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, for I seek not my will, but the will of Almighty God. <laughs> but the will of my Father. Anyone who says that I followed not my will, but the will of Almighty God, he's a Muslim. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, as a Muslim. He never claimed divinity, and it's clearly mentioned in the book of Acts, chapter number 2, verse number 22. E men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God amongst you by wonders and miracles and signs which God did by him, and you are witness to it. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God amongst you by wonders and miracles which God did by him, and you are witness to it. So we believe that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he was one of the mightiest messengers of God, but he was not God. So here we differ. As far as the teachings are concerned, your basic question was that Quran says we have to follow the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. When Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, came in this world, he was only sent for the Jews, only for Bani Israel. The Quran says clearly in Surah Saf, chapter number 61, verse number 6, that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, came as a messenger to the Bani Israel. It's mentioned in Surah Al Imran, chapter number 3, verse 49, that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was sent only for the Bani Israel. It's mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 10, verse number 5 and 6, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he says, Go ye not into the way of the Gentiles. Who are the Gentiles? Non Jews, Hindus, Muslims. Go ye not into the way of the Gentiles. Enter ye not into the city of the Samaritans, but rather go to the house of the Lordship of Israel. And a similar message is repeated in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 15, verse number 24. He says to his apostles that I have been sent not but to the Lordship of the house of Israel. So Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was sent only for the Bani Israel. And his message was supposed to be followed only for a particular time period. That's what the Bible says, that's what the Quran says. In spite of this, sister, if you read the Bible, what Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, says, if you analyze, it's mentioned in the Gospel of Luke, that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he was circumcised on the eighth day. We Muslims, mashallah, we are circumcised. Majority of the Christians aren't circumcised. So if you say that following the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, makes you a Christian, then I like to say, that I am more Christian than the Christian themselves. It is mentioned in the Bible. In the book of Ephesians, chapter number 5, verse number 18, that be not drunk. It's mentioned in the book of Proverbs, chapter number 20, verse number 1, that wine is a mocker. We Muslims, we don't drink alcohol. Quran says in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 90, alcohol is haram, we don't touch it. We don't touch it as a whole. The Muslims are the biggest community of teetotalers. So according to the Bible, you should not have alcohol. It's mentioned in the Bible that you should not have pork in several places. 
It's mentioned in the book of Leviticus, chapter number 11, verse number 7 and 8. It's mentioned in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 14, verse number 8. In the book of Isaiah, chapter number 65, verse number 2 to 5, no less than five places that you should not have pork. We Muslims, we don't have pork. But majority of the Christians, they have pork. So if Christian means a person who follows the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, we Muslims are more Christian than the Christians themselves. I can go on and on. When Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was asked that which is the first of the commandment, he mentioned in the Gospel of Mark, chapter number 12, verse number 29, he said, Shama Israelo Adnaihino Adnaihad. It's a Hebrew quotation which means, Yoro Israel, the Lord, our God is one Lord. We Muslims, mashallah, we believe in none but one God. Majority of the Christians, they believe in Trinity. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. So if you say Christian means a person who follows the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, we Muslims are more Christian than the Christian themselves. And you can refer to my video cassette, similarities between Islam and Christianity, which will give you more details that we are following more of the Bibles, the teachings of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, than the Christian themselves. Hope that answers the question, sister. <laughs> ورتل القرآن اصبح بصوتك اسمع لك وانا اقرأ كلام الله داوي نفوسنا لنحس في أعمالنا